Recently, a UN report on the environment predicted a full-blown crisis as early as 2040. In, in just 20 years, much of the Earth might be uninhabitable, which has everyone asking the big question, where are we going to put all of our <laughs> The directive I'm signing today will refocus America's space program on human exploration and discovery. This time, we will not only plant our flag and leave our footprint, we will establish a foundation for an eventual mission to Mars. Yes, Mars. Can we live there? Does it make sense to move there? Should America colonise the red planet and make that a priority? Tonight, we tackle those questions in our regular segment, No. <laughs> Scientists like Stephen Hawking have long considered Mars to be the best bet when the Earth kicks us off for good. But the idea of living there is, is kind of like Stephen Hawking cheating on his wife. Like, I can't picture it. I don't understand how it would happen. The whole thing is terrifying and inspirational. <laughs> but going to Mars is a stupid idea. First of all, there's no atmosphere. How, how, how can we fix that? The first and easiest way might be to just build factories that would basically turn carbon, fluorine, and sulfur in the Martian soil into greenhouse gases. There's always the possibility of bombarding the planet with asteroids. In this scenario, we'd capture asteroids on the edge of the solar system and use rocket engines to propel them into Mars. Ah, uh, yes. The old, if it's not working, throw a rock at it solution. <laughs> hey. And say we actually get up there and set up camp. Then what? Luckily, research is already underway to see how humans will handle it. The Mars Desert Research Station is in Hanksville, Utah. Folks would work in a simulated Mars environment. The biggest challenge, the lack of contact, for sure. The work we do is very important, but it's on such a strict regiment that there's also times that we get bored. <laughs> and it's in those times that I'm bored that I wish I could just, like, text my friends or call my mom. <laughs> You can't. She died two years ago and NASA hasn't told you yet. <laughs> Even if scientists do figure out how to leave Earth and live on Mars, trust me, you're not going to go with them. An optimistic cost number would be about $10 billion a person. We have to figure out how to improve the cost of trips to Mars by 5 million percent. $10 billion per person. That's a lot of money. But i got a plan. <laughs> First, you get a whole lot of credit cards and then you pay for your Mars trip on the credit cards. And then, and then the credit card company will go, hey, you owe us like $10 billion. And you'll be like, fuck off, Visa, I'm on Mars. It's, it's, it's the perfect crime. Is there any reason for us to go to Mars? No, none of these plans make sense. The problem isn't how do we get to Mars. The problem is that we're, we're running out of resources and Earth is turning into an uninhabitable wasteland. Why would we use our remaining resources to fix a different uninhabitable wasteland? <laughs> if we knew how to do that, we could just fix Earth! <laughs>